How are we doing? How are we doing? Hi. Hello. Hello, are we live? Hey, hey, how's it going? Probably about 10 seconds. I'm probably about 10 or 15 seconds behind, so I don't even know. I don't even know if anyone's even going to show up for this. And that's that's kind of okay, I guess, in a lot of ways. That's a very much so. Very okay. So, but if you're here, welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the, uh, we're going to solder up some, uh, some circuit boards here. Uh, feel free to type anything into chat if you want to. I've got the chat window kind of going right now up as we speak, and I'm just getting myself all set up with my station at home here. So let's see. What do we got? I'm going to need to also include, because I am going to be soldering up some integrated circuitry, so I am going to, let's see here, wear an ESD wrist strap. That way I've got my... Uh, that way I've got the stuff that I need to be able to do the things that I need to do. There we go. Okay. Now, I've actually um, taken some time yesterday to sort of prepare for this in a way to make sure I've got sort of uh, sort of everything here. I'll make sure my microphone is turned on for a second. It's like, you know, just, just double checking. You never, you never sometimes can tell. I'm going to check my software. Yes. Okay. Good. Ah, thought, thought maybe I would... Having a little bit of a problem there, or something along those lines. Anyway, um, so let's see. Actually, I should probably start recording here as well, right? Do a little record on here. Hi, hi, welcome. Welcome to a live recording session. I've never actually done anything live before, uh, ever. <laughs> I mean, like, everything I do is sort of impromptu in a lot of ways, but what I am essentially doing right now is I'm going to solder up some some circuit boards uh, live, uh, if you will. Uh, one of the things that I will be doing here, let me load up, uh, uh, let me load up on my screen, just in case I need to get down to it. Uh, let's see here. Oh no, I need to do a login for this here. Sorry, I thought thought I was thought I was prepared. I thought I actually was sort of prepared here, but I'm not. Let me log into my uh, my software for my PCB editing software. No, now it's asking me. This is the first time I have ever seen it ask me to make sure with pictures that I am not an actual robot. So that's kind of nice. Yeah. So let's see. I'm what I'm doing right now is off the screen. I am loading up my uh, I am loading up the schematics for this particular circuit and that's only in case I it's only in case I need to be able to look at it here I, I don't I don't think I'm going to need to be able to look at this here but it's one of those things that you never really know until you know you actually go and you try to uh, to do it here so let me I think is that you I think that's you I think that's you Okay. Yep, yeah, that sure looks like it. So here, let me kind of whap this onto the screen. Are you gonna be okay with this computer? <laughs> Again, I've never done anything live. I would, I'd be surprised if this worked to everything that I would actually want it to be able to work to. Ah, here we go. Okay, so hopefully you'll be able to see the schematic here. So the schematic of this is, I mean, like, I've kind of done a series of videos about this uh, a while back. Let me get my streaming thing back on, uh, kind of back going here again. So also let me just double check to make sure I am going live. Again, I've never done this before. Never done this before. In fact, I'm actually going to say this. Never done this before. This should be fun. There, hey, yeah. So, okay. So anyway, um, what you were looking at is the circuit board that I've built, the schematic for the circuit board, and I've got uh, this whole thing powers by a three volt source. Which actually, come to think of it, that's the one thing I did not grab are extra clips or extra little battery clips. So I might have to go and find those off screen here in just a little bit. But we've got a, we've got a battery. We got the microphone, which is here. Uh, this is a MEMS-based microphone. Uh, the microphone goes to a coupler circuit, 
The coupler circuit, consisting of a uh, capacitor resistor, filter out the DC uh, bias off the microphone, and then an amplifier circuit, actually an, an inverse amplifier circuit, is what boosts the uh, signals of the uh, microphone up uh, so that I can get to acceptable levels. And then finally, a comparator network via a series of operational amplifiers and uh, um, and other resistors and kind of think of little capacitors in there, as well as some LEDs that go uh, on the thing all the way out. Uh, the goal is to make a couple of these things so that they're actually uh, able to work kind of for the students here. So we're going to start by building these the kind of the exact same way we built the previous ones is what we built. Hi. Hey, how's it going, everyone? How's it going? Feel free to t say something in the chat box at any point here. Again, I've never done this before, so this is kind of kind of a fun thing is what it is. All right. So what do we got? What do we got? I'm going to actually get I have enough to build three circuit boards is actually what I've got. And kind of the goal of what I'm going to do here is I'm going to build them to the point where they're actually working. And then I'm going to be a total turd later on and actually and actually kind of put some things incorrectly um, on here is the is what's what's really going to happen. Uh, so let's start for this circuit here. I think what we're going to do is actually build each circuit part in tandem with one another. Um, so I'm going to grab my pair of tweezers. I've got a pair of uh, Double uh, OSA Technic tweezers. These are by far my my favorite type. Of, I can't I can't actually honestly say enough about this particular pair of tweezers. I mean, I order them for the folks at class. I order them for myself. Like I I order these just in general. They are marvelous marvelous tweezers. They are not so sharp and pointed that they can easily bend. They can grab small things when I need to. Um, they are by far one of the best tools that we could, that I have possibly uh, ever ever really used. So I've got my micro tip soldering iron is what I've got right now, which should be okay, even though the majority of the parts I'll be working with are kind of bigger um, in terms of their overall size. Let's grab some capacitors to start with, because I'm going to start kind of over here on the on the left hand side of this circuit board, assembling uh, C1, C2, and C3 for each one, which actually all happen to be, they all happen to be the exact same value of one microfarad. C1 and C2 are what we call bypass capacitors. And I'm kind of preparing these here. I'll move these co kind of capacitors up. These are, see these guys right there? Those are 0805 bypass capacitors. Well, with the exception of C3, C3 is actually not a bypass capacitor at all. Uh, C3 is the filter capacitor, which is actually going to filter out some of the signal that is uh, coming off of the off of the uh, um, off of the microphone is what it's doing that's what's helping that's part of the coupler circuit that's actually helping to reduce um, that's actually part of the coupler circuit that's helping to reduce some of the uh, uh, DC bias that the microphone normally outputs which is somewhere around the range of I think like point eight volts or something like that it's it's something around at a three volt battery bias on the microphone it's somewhere around i believe point uh point eight volts so here we go i've got the first circuit board i'm actually going to give this a little bit of a turn here and trying to do as much of this on screen as possible uh the solder that i'll be using is a lead-based solder it is let's see Stuff that I've got here, and I'm going to start with the smaller stuff to begin with here, is uh, AM1063 uh, lead 37 base solder with a diameter of 0 0.015 inches. So eh, probably some regular regular lead based soldering before. I don't know if you all used anything kind of similar to that at all with kind of what you've uh, kind of what you work on. So now. Um, we're going to come on down, and I am recording this session, by the way, so I will at some point have a chance to kind of repost this um, onto uh, uh, onto the uh, my own YouTube channel just a little bit later on. And uh, also, just again, fair warning, I have I have never done I have never done a live session before. This is very very <laughs> very new to me. Um, uh, the reason I'm doing it kind of on YouTube is just so because I, I wanted to I wanted to have a chance for not only for my class to be able to potentially view this because actually one of their classes is going to be to find the mistakes once I once I prove to myself that I've actually got a working circuit 
um, not only to prove that, but also to, um, you know, just to talk a little bit about, you know, circuits and everything like that, to have a little bit of a video in case anyone wants to sign on and see a little bit more about how, how electronics are actually assembled. My temperature seems a little low. It seems like it might be a little bit low. That's okay. That's okay. But what's my temperature? My temperature is actually currently at 610 degrees Fahrenheit on my soldering iron using my microtip soldering iron, my KN microtip soldering iron, very easily my most favorite and cherished microtip um, out of all of the soldering. Now, I'm actually, one of the things I'm going to do real quickly is I'm going to adjust my lens filter just a little bit um, because not my lens filter I'm sorry my eyepiece that's what I've got it's my my eyepiece I've got a little bit of some cleaning solution just off screen hey come on you what do you not wanna man you all hear that now maybe I don't have any cleaning solution off the screen here. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. Ah, there we go. That just took, maybe there was a little thing in there or something like that. Actually, one of the things that they released recently on, uh, I think it was, it was Leica actually released this recently. Leica released uh, some information talking about how important it is for people who work in with microscopes to be able to make sure that their microscope is cleaned. I mean, if you think about this, how many times have you been told by people, don't touch your face, don't touch your, oh, geez, why don't you stay down over there? Thank you very much. Uh, don't touch your face, don't touch your eyes, don't touch your anything like that. And here you go, you're putting a, uh, you're putting your, your microphone on the, uh, oh, we've paused. We have paused our live session, I think. At least I think it's paused. I have no idea. I have no clue. I'm assuming that this is paused right now. Don't officially know if this is paused at the moment. We're, uh, we're going to kind of find this out. Finding this out together. Finding this out together. So let's put a little bit of some solder on C3. Has this really paused? Oh, gosh. I don't understand live streaming at all. Oh, and there's my email. That's the other thing you probably wanted to hear bounce around in the background. Let me, let me go and <laughs> turn that off. This is definitely... Okay. Got to carefully turn that off there. There we go. Is that a little bit better? I don't know. I don't know if I'm still broadcasting or not. I've got no idea. I really don't have have any any clue whether or not I'm even broadcasting live right now. This all just could be... Well, I am recording it, though, so you've got that kind of going on right now. Just kind of a, kind of a nice thing. So, don't see anything in the chat at the moment. So it is possible. I mean, I I also have nothing but a uh, you know a standard you know basic internet service might be the right way to kind of phrase what that is. So that is uh, probably in a nutshell probably the easiest way to phrase what that is. Oh no, is that just me? Is that me? Am I having a problem with uh, something here? Am I not doing something right? I might not be doing something right. I might actually not be doing something right. I have no idea what's happening here. Is there something going wrong? Oh, no. The whole thing just cut out. That's wonderful.
Is it still working? Can I return? Live now? Is this, I mean, can you all still see me here? I've got no idea. Are you all still there? Oh, hi. There's people who have actually joined. Hi there. <laughs> My whole thing just decided to uh, go and uh, do a uh, and do a delay. Hey, Chris. Hey, Bill. I'm sorry about that. Um, <laughs> my whole the whole YouTube software thing just went down in a in a flourish and a flurry is what it went down in. Okay, so I've got my capacitors attached to that one. I'm so sorry about that. Again, I'm I'm new. I'm complete complete. What's the right word? Noob. Noob. That sounds about right. Yeah, noob is 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 what that's uh, what's going on here. Yeah, noob is uh, is what that is. So I'm so sorry about that. That was a uh, <laughs> that was a thing. That's what that was. <laughs> All right, so uh, now we got the second circuit board. Let's put a. Oop, I got a little fluxing agent on my test pad. Yeah, my circuit board actually has several test pads on it, but I've noticed that my. I noticed this the other day. My T plus test pad is 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 actually the same thing as another test pad that I've got elsewhere. So I've got one ground and two uh, identical. Uh, VCC, which is like, uh, in terms of the circuit board, it's actually just above the actual, the actual circuit. Now, Bill and Chris, you're actually here right now. What you are looking at is essentially what is the Capstone Students um, project is actually what you're looking at. One of the things that we are reviewing with them is we are going to be reviewing with them how to do troubleshooting. So we are having them build something what's called an out of control action plan, an OCAP, which is uh, you know a one letter R off of uh, you know what uh, what it really kind of uh, is at the end. It's when something goes bad. It's the documentation that says what do I do <laughs> when it goes bad. Is what it is out of control action plan. That actually comes from um, that actually comes from my bud or uh, the uh, new one of the new mem staff member Greg who. Um, uses that at Mo or used that uses used that at Motorola um, which uh, was a series of documents that all said okay if uh, for instance if one of these capacitors has a has a short circuit on it you know if one of these capacitors decides you know not to work for some reason what is the correct plan of what to do how do I see it? like how do I know it's happening how do I know something actually is uh, not working correctly and what can I do about it what are the tools so it's essentially kind of like a series of quality operating procedures um, with the exception of the uh, um, the O cap which is I mean the joke is is it's one one letter short of of O O crustacean is uh, might be the uh, nice way nice way to be able to phrase it keeping everything PG 13 and everything like that you know or PG something I don't know I, 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 I try to make sure that there's I don't specifically state that these videos are like meant for little kiddos, but I'm not exactly I'm not exactly getting angry and throwing out lots and lots of words that will get you thrown out of a baseball game if you say it to an umpire, you know, that kind of that kind of stuff. So, I leave that for when I'm in class. It's usually the, the right time for being able to say something like that. All right, and then we have the third board here. Actually, you know what I might do? You know what I might do after this? I might just attach all of the capacitors after this because C4 needs to still be attached uh, um, as well. So there is a uh, there is a little bit of some of that. Um, I'm applying this fluxing agent, this uh, Amtec fluxing agent, which is this uh, kind of this tackier flux. I like using the tacky flux in comparison. Like I've seen some other fluxing agents. In particular, I think there's one at the college which they use in the in the uh, in our other uh, soldering and fabrication laboratories. And the reason I don't like that fluxing agent as much, number one, this coats leads uh, really really well. Like so for things that have a lot of height, in particular, this uh, this coats them very very well. Uh, number two, I can reuse this fluxing agent for a long long time. Like if I if I had to continuously keep using this flux to um, solder parts down to a board. I mean, this is going to stay here. This is going to stay here for, I mean, lots and lots of uses very, very easily. You notice that when I am, oh, that's not good. Uh, you notice that I am making sure 
that the capacitor is getting heated up to the point where it's actually going to have solder that flows on top of it. This also comes with a very, very steady hand of mine where, you know, just making sure that I'm, I'm kind of applying a couple of things at the same time. Number one, I'm making sure that my wrists are flat on the ground while I'm doing all of this. Um, I'm trying to make sure that the uh, that my wrists are have as much stability as possible. Number two, I am applying a very small amount of force down onto the board and onto the tweezers when I'm moving them around. Oh, excuse me. Um, which helps to keep the keep the tweezers stable. Um, but yeah, so it all about really is kind of all about the steady steady hands uh, when it comes to this. Um, so, but yeah, so the tacky flux. So I can use it a whole bunch of times. Um, it covers things that have three dimensions or has has bigger like for chip resistors it works about as good as the the same stuff but um or the stuff that we've got like the more the more uh oh gosh what would be the right term low viscosity stuff that's inside of the uh that's inside the fabrication laboratory it works just about the same with that um and uh, i know bill you've probably used that stuff refilled that stuff from time to time that's pretty it's pretty watery you know, like this this other fluxing agent, you really got to kind of, you can really just use a an eyedropper almost as you will to just kind of dispense the whole thing out um, if you uh, if you really wanted to. So, all right, that's all. So that's all three of the chip resistors that are on these boards. You, I'm going to leave R1 blank. R1 is actually just meant to bypass the switch if I don't want to, if I don't want to use the switch. If I don't feel like using the switch, I, I can actually completely bypass it. Um, but just while I'm, I can finish all of the capacitors, just because it's all kind of in, in one spot. And again, the reason I am, the reason I am building these boards is because um, the goal is going to be uh, right now. The MEM students all have a, uh, uh, for their class, they have a, a homework assignment, a, a homework. They have some things that they have to do to provide for. Uh, an out of control action plan and uh, we've given them a variety of scenarios to uh, think about for their out of control action plan and uh, one of the things that we want to just uh, you know work with them on is uh, you know what how can you tell how can you measure whether or not something is uh, uh, working yeah not if, yeah exactly yeah um, yeah, by the way, I, I think this, I think there is a, there's like a 15 second delay or something like that. So I am reading chat. So if you see the, uh, I, I see the basically water, uh, not a fan. I'm, and I'm kind of looking back and forth between that. So if there is a little bit of a delay in terms of me responding back, uh, that is entirely my fault uh, for, for what that is. So, um, but anyway, uh, yeah, the, uh, so these boards, they're being assembled right now because, um, I would like to be able to uh, assemble these correctly to the point where they're working, and then I kind of want to screw them up and see with the students if their O caps have enough material to cover to cover the search. Like, does I mean, like something is going wrong? You know, I'm taking a look over the whole thing. Can I tell exactly uh, what's a uh, What's going wrong with the uh, with the board? What's the fix? What are their tools to fix it? And this is very much a uh, it is one thing that engineers typically don't like to do is use <laughs> use verbiage of things and actually write some stuff out. I, I can't even tell you myself how much I how much I personally dislike writing out um, writing things out sometimes. Like sometimes it's one of those like and everyone kind of gets like this every once in a while. It's like I know my way of doing things. I know the way I like to do things, but at the same time, why do I got to explain it out to someone in terms of what it is that uh, that I'm doing? I can actually one of the things I'll yeah you know, is this is this zoom okay? Is this is this uh, uh, out okay? Uh, far enough okay? I see Chris. Oh, thanks. Delay is pretty normal across all these types. Yeah, is is it? I I think so. It's one of those like since I've never done it before, I'm I'm totally I am totally totally dumb when it comes to what these exact type of delays are. So. Um, I myself sort of have no clue <laughs> in terms of what this, uh, what the delay actually happens to be. Um, so, uh, which is just kind of a, it is, it is what it is. Oh, sorry, my wire is getting right in the way. So now we've got the fourth bypass capacitor, or sorry, the third bypass. It's the fourth capacitor. They're all one microfarad, 0805 
capacitors. I think these I bought from Murata. I could be wrong on that. Murata sounds like the right source of where I get the uh, of where I get these uh, capacitors from. So might have also just been something that fell off the back of a truck and wound up at the college at some point. Eh, it's one of those things that happens every once in a while. Um, let's move on up to the top and put on the the big old switches. That's a pretty easy one to be able to do. So I'm gonna put a whole bunch of fluxing agent down on these pads. I actually just recently heard um, that uh, our lab tech John. He had to go onto campus recently because uh, one of the companies that uh, is on our college campus uh, had to uh, had to get some entrance into. Uh, well, I suppose I should have prepared the buttons somewhere uh, out here. I, I have them here. I, I have three of them here. I just have to I have to put them out. Um, by the way, I don't know if you guys. I don't know if you all saw the uh, the toothbrushes that uh, I took apart. Uh, you know, the Star Wars toothbrushes. Same exact push button. Same exact push button on the inside of the um, of the toothbrushes. The exact same uh, very <clears throat> high quality toothbrush that was on the inside. Now, hopefully I've got enough heat to be able to just sort of make this work. And if not, well, I'm just going to have to kind of make do here as best as possible. Because this is a relatively larger size lead. So I'm just going to, yeah, I'm going to apply some additional fluxing agent onto this and then just kind of work with it again as we're as we're moving along here. So it's a pretty big, uh, pretty, pretty larger size lead, which takes longer to heat up. So if I'm applying, if I am, uh, the, the whole goal of doing soldering using an iron is to be able to get both the pad and the part hot enough to where it forms a true fusion bond between the uh, the two parts. So hopefully that's uh there we go. There's the third, and that's flowing over very very nicely, especially with my finger just sticking in the way right there. Sorry about that. So, but anyway, I just recently heard um John, uh, my our, our lab tech over at the college is actually making his way back over to the college. He might also have a setup that he might be doing something similar to this with so to help out students. And who knows, maybe even provide a little bit of some in entertainment, infotainment. What do you call this on here? I don't even know what you call this. I just call it, you know what I call it? I call it the same thing I called it in my first video. Number one, uh, students, students, uh, we're all students of, of all types, and I myself had to learn this new online program just to be able to you know get good at doing things and I thought to myself but there's so much that we do in our in our classes that involve that involve working with tools working with our hands you know like the, I mean there's just so much when they first told us that there was this stay at home order all I could think about to myself was oh man there's there's so much that we need to be able to do that just requires sitting down in front of the tool for a while and just practicing and learning how to do it. I mean, even myself, there were some times, there are some nights that I stayed late at the college. Um, I know one, I know one in particular, um, Bill used to, uh, Bill used to help me out with the, uh, this electronics class, um, as a kind of an assistant to it. And that class went pretty late. Sometimes there were a few nights that after class was done, it's like I've got to unwind a little bit, so I'm going to go sit down at an electronic station or some sort of a station all by myself, listen to some nice music, something along those lines, and solder, practice soldering, practice wire bonding, just make sure that I've, that I've got up to speed. Actually, the one thing that I probably spent a lot of time doing was trying to hold, trying to hold a part still underneath the microscope. That actually, like, while you're holding on to the part, that's kind of challenging from time to time. You may notice, by the way, I am applying a larger than normal amount of uh, solder onto these pads. Um, reason being for that is I, I want that button to be mechanically stable. When you're talking about circuit boards that have a whole bunch of components, the integrated circuits, all of the things like the ICs and the um, the uh, the SMCs and anything that's like a BGA, ball grid array type connection, all of the really heavy components are in some ways 
just as difficult. All those small connections that are on those BGAs, um, you know, the 84-pin connection on the typical memory unit, all of that stuff, and it still, it still is harder to put a connector onto the board in comparison to all of that. Because not only does that connector have to be connected, usually it's a larger size part, it has some larger amount of metal mass so it makes it where it's more harder to solder on, but then on top of that, it's got to be good. It has to be good to be able to be pressed or pulled or connected, disconnected from whatever wire it happens to be over and over and over again. I mean, the one that always kind of bugged me is my own phones with micro USB. They felt fine. Like you first get them, it's like there's nothing more satisfying than a brand new micro USB and you plug in a brand new wire and you, you feel that like it's not a click because the I is too like, it, it's more like a click is what it is. I don't know if there's a vowel for that. There probably is in some, some Swahili language or something like that, you know. But at the same time, it's not a click. It's something that like feels just a little bit softer and not as not as angry as a, as a click. Now, later on in that life, yeah, there's a click and a wiggle. And there's nothing more frustrating than that feeling of the wiggle because you put your phone down and you're like, wait, did, did, I, put it, did I put it down just right? Is my, is my phone going to be you know charging or am i going to wake up and it's like oh it charged exactly five percent and then somewhere in the middle of the night my connector got just a little bit used i hated that i hated that with a with a crying crying passion is uh, is how i hated it um and so and so it's one of those like even on a circuit board like i'm putting an excess amount of solder on on all three of these buttons for all the boards because because I want to make sure that those buttons stick. I want to make sure that those buttons stick down and that even though as many times as I'm going to be pressing them over and over and over again, I want to make sure that they are going to be uh, okay at the end. All right. So now, now the next chip I think that we're going to put on, I'm going to skip U1 for right now. And if you'd, uh, anyone who's watching, if you'd watched in the earlier videos, um, the problem is with that chip is that it, it, you have to kind of get lucky in terms of being able to solder it on. Um, you can't do it with an iron. It has to be done via hot air. Um, and you have to be sort of careful in terms of being able to put it on because the lid of the microphone is very easy for it to pop off. The lid is soldered onto the actual package. So we're actually probably going to solder that on uh, last uh, is what we're going to do. Now... The next thing I need, I just realized, I don't think I have. Do I? Do I? I'm going to look at my working board for a second. And I think, yeah, I forgot to grab one of the resistors that I needed. So we'll grab that in just a little bit when I go off to try and find the battery clip. Next thing let's put on then, just because we'll, we'll kind of work from the, uh, from the top down is going to be uh, R3 and R4. Now, R3 and R4, on, on the MEM students, these are not the same R3 and R4 that you all have. Um, my circuit board has something just a little bit different in that on my number one input for my LM324QT, for the number one pin, you all have it connected straight to ground. I was playing around with the amplifier circuit just a little bit, and I was making sure that I had some degree of variability, and so I did connect it there, but I basically have I have a 2 mega ohm resistor that's connected up high to VCC in my schematic, and a 120 ohm resistor connected down to ground. This is pretty much zero volts, um, but on my board, um, on, on my board that I've got, I don't have the, I don't have zero volts uh, for that board. Uh, I, I instead had a little bit more variability, so what I did was I, I connected up a uh, a 120 ohm resistor uh, uh, all the way down to ground, which is uh, what we're going to attach to. That would be R4 is where that's going to be. So I need a few 120 ohm resistors. And I use 120 ohms kind of throughout the circuit. Namely, um, this particular capstone project, um, when, you, when you speak into the microphone, depending on how loud you're speaking, certain LEDs will turn up and... Uh, and uh, and turn down uh, uh, going on to here. So um, the uh, yeah the uh, so the um, the yeah the uh, the LEDs are, are there's going to be three LEDs down at the bottom. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing here. There's three LEDs down at the uh, 
down at the bottom part of the circuit board, which we'll uh, we'll get to a uh, little bit. Oh, there it is. There they are. So there's three LEDs down at the very bottom of the board, which we'll we'll get to. They represent the different volume levels of which someone is speaking at. R2 is going to need to be a one kiliohm resistor is what it needs to be. But R3, let me see now. R3 is going to be the two mega ohms. So R4 is going to be where these other ones go. So let's attach everything down to R4, starting with the circuit board that's all the way on the left-hand side. I'm going to put flux on all three of the boards. This fluxing agent also, it, the, the, the other nice thing I like about this fluxing agent, it's cheap. Like a 3cc syringe costs, or, I'm sorry, a either 10 or 30cc syringe costs something in the round the range of like 12 or 14 dollars. It is very inexpensive. So it's effective in terms of being able to use it in a, on a circuit board. Um, it's uh, it's effective for things of both chip resistors as well as uh, tall things, which the nice thing is, the nice thing is about chip resistors. Now, it's, it's not going to be as nice for these, um, for the uh, uh, 0603 chip resistors. Every resistor on our circuit board is an 0603, and I did that because I'd like everyone to be able to see what those numbers are that are on the board. The nice thing is about this stuff, well, I grabbed a 131 ohm resistor apparently, so it's a little bit off. See that? See what I did? I can just take this fluxing agent and plop the little chip resistor there, and it sticks. Now, that's not so bad for an 0603, but when you start going down to 0201 and 0105s in, like, the Imperial system, um, it, it takes anything. It takes any small, minor amount of static on you. It, it takes, like, 15 electrons, and that thing will not leave your tweezers. And you're going to be like, get off, get off. Wait, no, don't, you know, you know, don't fly off into the ethos because you'll never find it again at that point. Um, so it, you need to be able to have that there. And the tacky flux provides an excellent source by which that chip resistor can attach to it. Even in some of the cases, gosh, that chip resistor, you see what it almost did? It almost just kind of maneuvered on over into that spot there. Uh, that would have been kind of a kind of a funny thing to be able to see. So, yeah, I mean, this is a, it's a, I'm trying to connect this up to grounds. So this isn't necessarily like anything like the fact that it's not a 120 ohm resistor. It makes me wonder if my other chip resistors aren't 121 ohms. I'm sort of pulling this out from the, uh, from the, Hey, who put stuff in here, box? So there, there might be some other kind of things that could be uh, interfering with the uh, 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 with the way that this is going. Um, you never know. It's one of those, and even in some cases, it's like, oh, I got a chip resistor. Yeah, throw it, throw it anywhere. You know, you can just go anywhere you want to. You know, doesn't doesn't really matter at the very end of it. So we got the next chip resistor. Let's see if this one is uh, one through. And for those of you who are tuning in, and uh, you know. Don't remember, yep, another 130 ohm resistor. So this is a code. It may say 131, but remember the last digit for a three-numbered resistor, that last digit is, um, oops, sorry about that. There we go. Uh, the last digit is the number of zeros that follow after the first two of them. So um, so for right, what you see right there is one, three, and then a single zero that follows after the three. So one, three, and then uh, uh, a zero afterwards, making these guys 130 ohms, which would probably make all of them 130 ohms. If I had to guess, I've pulled two of them out the same here. And if not, I'll just be something I've got to... Oh, there's some... There's some... You see that? You see that? What is that? What is that? There's a piece of crud. There's a piece of crud on the board. What are you? What are you? It's a booger. There's a booger on the board. Is that going to interfere? Is that a biological interference? I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. <laughs> Holy cow. Uh, I didn't expect that. I don't know. I'm not sure where that came. Then again, this this is coming from my workstation. And my workstation is um, unlike a clean workstation. It is a, um, is a workstation that requires some attention. Um, frequently. I'm sure if I actually did clean it, actually, no, I did clean it. I think it was last weekend. I cleaned my workstation and, uh, then I couldn't find anything. So that's a little bit of a 
a little bit of a problem uh, when it comes to that, uh, what, what I'm doing here. Also, uh, one of the things that uh, someone asked me the other day was, uh, is there any way, is there any way that I can, um, that I can put an overhead camera somewhere near me? Hey, would you? And uh, the answer is, I'm going to give that a shot using something I think is going to basically work at its at its at its cheapest uh, at its cheapest level. So there we have we have three 130 ohm resistors uh, that are on there. Um, now the other ones that the R3 in my schematic is two mega ohms. I don't think I actually have any two mega ohms. So I found the next closest thing, um, which is a 2.2 mega ohm resistor. So I'm gonna pull I'm gonna pull a couple of these these guys out. But yeah, so I've got something coming in the um, in the mail that I ordered um, that should be able to provide um, a little bit better uh, view kind of more of like a more of like from behind like my shoulders kind of view more or less on uh, what it is that uh, that I'm doing here um, and I'm gonna give the camera a try I, I am not so confident that it's working right now right now I'm just I'm just using a basic laptop like just about anyone else's but I have a lot of people there that are telling me like, oh, they'd really rather see like where my where my hands are. How messy is the workstation? Which is that was my first hesitation. Like, I don't know if I want to show everyone how messy the workstation is at this point. You know, it's a, it's just you know, either that or maybe it'll make me clean it up more. I don't know. I don't know if it'll it'll be a thing or not. Um, hey, ooh, let's uh, put the more put more uh, solder wire uh, on here. Let's put a little bit more. More of uh, this, this. So R3, let's see if I've actually got a 2.2 mega ohm resistor. So 2.2 should be 2, 2, and then five zeros following. And, yep, that's what I've got. I've got a black hair that's floating around. I don't know where those black hairs are coming from. I keep thinking I see, like, black hair kind of floating around all over the place. And I really, I mean, like, I have a dog, but his hair is yellowish colored white is what it is so most definitely uh uh not him i'll come back to that one here in just a second i'm gonna kind of try to see if i can get on a on a roll you notice though folks who are because i'm going to kind of post this video up to a few places i found a i found a facebook group that um i found a facebook group that actually um Oh, well, now that's upside down. Let me fix that. Um, that actually is all about printed circuit boards. And I was actually really excited when I found that group. Um, I was like, oh, that's cool. There's a there's a fa there's actually like a professional Facebook group uh, about this. And uh, as it turns out, um, it doesn't it seems like it's just a bunch of companies that are all advertising. Oh, look, see, that one says two zero five. So I do have some two mega ohms. They're just mixed in with two point two mega ohm resistors and that's really fair you know <laughs> that's really fair what about this guy are you 2.2 nope you are too so they are all mixed together in the 2.2 that's probably that's probably what it is i i imagine that's exactly what that is what about you are you a 2.2 i'd like to just oh well maybe you were no you are a you are a 2.4 Eh, close enough, you know. Oh, just I almost tipped over the entire box there. <laughs> yeah. you, you see what we just went through right there? You see what we just went through? Uh, that That's my bench. That is exactly my bench. My bench should be storage of... Oh, I didn't, I didn't even tin that, did I? Let me put that here. This will actually make for good troubleshooting. Oh, it's not a 2.0. It's not the same as the other ones are. It's slightly different than that. Which is one of the things I want to do at the end. I want to get three of them working with you all live uh, on camera while I kind of talk about this a little bit, um, and then uh, come on back and and sort of uh, uh, you know introduce them to my friend the Goblin, who he, uh, has a tendency to make things not work. Um, very well. Uh, let's see. So that's the I, well, that's R4. So now we'll come on over here to R3. That's soldered into place. I love I love the micro knife tip in terms of how well that links up with the side edge of a uh, chip component like that. It just really is 
really is awesome. Well, while we're while we're here with the 2.0s, I think I think last I checked over with the schematic, there is a comparator network circuit. Yeah, here it is. It's it's not not really drawn very well in here. It's R7, R8, R9 and R10. But R7 also happens to be a 2 mega ohm resistor. So let's just while I've got the well, I had I had a I had two two mega ohm resistors out. I can only see one. I am assuming that this other one that I've got over here. Let's see, what are you? What are you? Yeah, you're one of them. So I, you just sort of flew off and away for a little bit there. Uh, let's see. I've got another one here. Are you two? I, I mean, I'd like to keep everything the same before I go and destroy. No, you're a two point. You're a two point two. What are you? You're a two point two. You're a two-point leave my tweezers. Thank you very much. Let's see. We've got a... There's a 2.0. There's a 2.0 resistor uh, in there. I think there's actually... I think there's actually two... two and actually, now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, there are. So the amplifier circuit. So the so the signal comes out of the microphone, and it's a, it's a varying DC signal. Um, the C3R2 combination around the filter, what it does is couples the circuit and removes the DC bias. So you've got a varying DC that goes all the way down to zero volts. So like when it comes out the microphone, it's 0.8 volts and then it bounces around there. I don't want to amplify up the 0.8 volts. I wanted to reduce the 0.8 volts down to zero and just let the microphone go up and down a little bit from there, which is what that circuit does. Now that, that circuit, which has the net list of FILT1, FILTER1 is what that stands for. FILT1 goes into this part of the amplifier here, which is a um, a circuit that has a uh, roughly a gain of 50. I think 2 mega ohms divided by almost 50K is uh, or roughly 40, 40, 50, somewhere around there, which actually isn't enough. I'm going to have to boost that up a little bit. Um, that's going to be one thing that I actually have to boost up. But now that I am looking at it, there is a uh, amplifier circuit that needs a uh, chip component there as well that's around 2 mega ohms. So I might as well bring them all out uh, that I had prepared um, and just kind of some of them might be a little bit off actually I have seven so I, I grabbed one extra because why not you know why not grab one two or five extra or something along those lines there you know? and so the let's see here so I need to put this at R R5 and R7 okay so now we're gonna go back to oh no nope, that's me there you go. I'm going to go back over to here. And I accidentally brought up my live camera. Oops. <laughs> the, where are you? There's live streaming. Okay. You're all still there. Yay, this is still working. I I can do something. This is this is a master's degree in electrical engineering. It allows me to be a YouTuber at this point. You know? Yeah. Okay. Let's okay. So R5 and R7, huh? I think those two are actually look yeah, they're located very close to each other. So that should be an easy easy one here. I actually, I have to give a lot of credit to some of the students in terms of your designs. I mean, I kind of throw my boards together so that they are functional, but they are not, they are not very, um, they could use some better work in terms of part orientation, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, one, one student in particular actually had every single chip resistor and chip capacitor all facing in the left to right orientation now you don't see that too often in the uh in the board industry because it just there's just sometimes you're just not able to do that but when i saw this this student circuit i was like oh that actually that looks really really nice is what that looks like that looked really 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 nice all right so now i've got r5 so i'm gonna solder the I'm, what i'm doing is i'm tinning the pads I am tinning the left-hand pad because I myself am uh, predominantly right-handed. So I am handling the chip components with my, my right hand while I attempt to keep the knife edge of the uh, soldering iron still. And I'm actually going to move this 2 mega ohm chip component here. Most of these should be around 2. So if they're off slightly, if they are off, ever so slightly. I'm not going to be like this one right here. This is 2.2. I'm not going to be too bothered by that. I'm really not. I am going to try to make all of the rest of them the same if I can, 
So R5 is 2, R7 is 2.2. Is that what I'm seeing here? That's what you're seeing? Is that what you're all seeing as well? Yeah? Yeah? Some of the MEM students, if you, you know, if some of them were to, I, I sent this link out to, I sent this link out actually to a whole bunch of folks on the, in the MEMS classes. Um, so if one of their, two of the MEM students, I'll try to get this uploaded at the, uh, at the, uh, by the end of the night tonight so that one of them could potentially take a look at this and maybe even make a troubleshooting thing in case one of these circuits doesn't work. They might be able to look at this and say, well, why, why didn't you do this? You, you prof, you know, why didn't that happen? Oh, there is my chip component sticking to my finger. Okay. What are you? You are a, you are a 2.4. Why do I have 2.4s mixed into here? Okay. Here's a two. So that's a two mega ohm. We'll put the two mega ohm in the correct orientation. We we'll put the two mega ohm in the correct orientation. Maybe without a giant stalactite on it would be very nice. Um, and let's take a look. Do I have a 2.2? I do have a 2.2. It's kind of nice. Okay, so can you please? No, no, no. Hey, no, hey, come on. Hey, where are you going? Hey, let go. Come on. I'm trying to do a. I'm trying to do a show here, chip component. That's what this count says, right? This is a show. This is TV, right? This is, <laughs> it is what it is, <laughs> you know? Kind of counts as a TV show. What do you all think? Well, what do you, the viewers at home, think? You know? Eh, this is uh, kind of what's happening here. All right, so you, what chip component are you? Are you okay? You're a two. Hey, you will work. You will work just fine. So now we've got a two. Now, am I able to get, is the last chip component that I got maybe a 2.2? Did I get lucky? I did get lucky. That's kind of nice. That is actually very nice. See that? See what happened there? I got the correct chip component, but I get to stick inside that tacky flux, allowing it to get held into place. And see how easy this is to move in. That's why I really do like this flux. It's a... Uh, uh, I have to get the exact make and model for the uh, for the Amtech flux. It's something like TC-559, I think is what it is. In fact, actually, wait, do I have it up here anywhere? No, no, and no, I don't have it there. Uh, before that, before the end of the video, I'll try to I'll try to uh, list what the uh, what the actual uh, fluxing agent is um, uh, in terms of what it is. Right now, I just kind of have it in a in an empty syringe, or well, not an empty syringe, but I, I put it inside of a kind of a syringe that's easier just for my hands to be able to handle. It does come, I will say, it does come in a larger size. That is a terrible solder job. You see that? You see that? Let's see if we can fix that up a little bit. There we go. Kind of do that and see the fluxing agent allows me to do that. It allows me to kind of move that resistor into spot because the fluxing agent that stays there is more likely is more likely going to have a uh, a chance to bond up to the spots that are there. Yeah, educational TV show while working on board design from home. This counts. This counts as educational entertainment, and, and which is, in my opinion, exactly exactly what this is it's what it was intended to do it's what it was intended to 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 be a part of with it absolutely now for r6 r6 is on the beginning part of the operational amplifier circuit and forms a ratio in my circuit i actually have a 47 k ohm resistor instead i am going to be using a 10 kilo ohm resistor which is going to look like a little bit different than all the rest of them so I'm pulling them out of my little my little box right now there we go pulling them all all out of the box there we go oh hey don't don't fall on the mouse now it's not a very nice thing so let me show you kind of what this what this looks like here I'm gonna dispense on R6 I'm gonna do the R6 is kind of a little bit off camera one of them was on there but yeah here's what the uh, Here's what the 10 kilo ohm resistor looks like. So it is green in its color, which tells me that it's got a slightly higher tolerance in terms of its uh, a slightly tighter tolerance. So it has uh, less variability 
Although more often than not, if there's if it's marked with less variability, there's usually some sort of a percentage of some sort that's like that gives it to where that higher tolerance actually has a fourth digit. So in some ways, I I have never really seen a chip resistor that was green that also um that also had a uh, um a tighter tolerance than uh, than you would typically find to it. So that I, I am almost entirely a. Uh, I am almost entirely uh, uh, uncertain as to what it is, but it was one of those. It was one of those. Hey, I found him! I found him lying around in a box, I, and I don't have any uh, 47 kiloohm resistors, so I'll just use uh, these chip resistors instead. Um, is uh, is is what I'm using, and they're actually they're actually going on really nicely. I I don't know who makes these. The the uh, uh, the bag was more or less. Uh, Try to get that to where it's right in the middle and it doesn't have a huge stalactite sitting on there. Or actually, someone told me the other day, someone told me that that, um, that little stalactite that forms, they called it a dog tail. And I was like, you know, it does. It does look exactly like a dog tail. Like uh, if you point it up on its side, which I, I know I did in one of the earlier videos, I I kind of was messing around a little bit with, uh, with one of the solder joints and uh, I... Uh, I got it to, you know, I pulled a, I pulled the solder way, 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 way out, and uh, I decided to, uh, I decided to, uh, you know, just kind of make a purposeful bad solder joint. And I'm like, it does look, it does look like a dog tail. And someone told me that that is actually, that is actually a term, is what that is. Okay, well, how about you stay there? How about I not grab you? Oh no, how about I do grab you? There you go. Thank you very much. That's not pretty at all. That last one. That last one is, the third board is looking more and more messed up every time because I just don't seem to be able to get the whole thing right with it here. Okay, it's coming on the end. Yeah, still got enough with it right there. Keeping sure, one of the things I, I don't know if you're noticing just off the screen. Actually, you're probably not noticing. I, I just noticed about half of, the, half of what you're looking at in this video is my horribly painted and chalked up wall behind me um so here let me turn that around so one of the things i'm doing every once in a while with this i, I have limited space one of the things the next camera i have will, will be in here but i have a solder station where the soldering iron sits over here and the uh um i am cleaning it off i am i am taking the um the brass wire that's in here and I am cleaning off the soldering iron uh, a whole bunch and the reason that you want to do that the reason that you really want to do that is because there is no sense in soldering with a dirty tip there's 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 no sense in soldering with any type of dirty tip if your tip is contaminated or or rusted and it's not shiny then it's going to produce bad solder joints that's just that's just the end all be all of the of the whole thing. I've got a spare floating uh 2.4 mega ohm resistor. Would you excuse me? You are you are no longer welcome in this show. Uh, <laughs> the okay. So now, uh what do we have left? I think okay, so now R8, R9 and R10 across every board. R8, R9 and R10 on every board which surround the QFN chip all Three of those are one mega ohm chips, uh, chip resistors. And again, all all chip uh, resistors are 0805s, or excuse me, uh, 0603s. The capacitors are 0805s. Now I have actually I'm having a hard time grabbing onto my components. What I'm going to do is wet my tweezers down with some alcohol off onto the side, so that that way I should be able to get a couple of them at a time, which I I am doing uh, kind of off screen. I don't have these in a in a tape and reel or anything like that. These actually didn't didn't really come in one. Uh, I'm I'm grabbing I'm grabbing several of them at uh, at one time and just kind of moving them off to the side because I need nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then uh, eight and nine. And I'm I'm going to have to check each one of these as well. Um, so these resistors are important for their value. Their value establishes the reference voltages for the three comparators that are being used to um, compare for the sound level. So if these values change, it means that the reference levels of voltages will also change. Uh, actually, across the uh, across the entire board, um, they they will change. 
So here is R8, R10, and R9. We'll start with the fluxing agent down, and then we'll start tinning the pads. Got to wait for that beep for the soldering iron to beep on. There we go. All right, so now we're going to come down here. Here's R8, R10, and R9. Oh, R9, did you? There we go. And yeah, R10's got some... R10's got some stuff onto it. Yeah, I still do like, uh, for the most part, you're, you might be off screen there. Sorry about that. Here, come back. Come back onto screen. Come back. Come back so you can actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> there we go. All right. So that is 105. Yep, that is a, that is definitely a 1 mega ohm. And we'll let you, it's so cool the way that surface tension brings that resistor right into place that really is in so many ways a neat part about how how solder works and how like when solder gets hot the physics of it how it's attracted i mean like i've been doing this for a while and i still i still to this day get a kick out of um out of how solder works well that's not <laughs> what is that 310 uh Sir, you are in the wrong place. <laughs> I don't know where you came from. I don't know where you came from. Let's see, 105. Yep, that's a that is a one mega ohm. There we go. Tack you onto the other side there, just to put you on. I'll come back over with a with the solder with you in just a just a little bit. And then 105. Yep, there's another. The last 105. There is another one. There, you see that? Okay, and the last 105 is there. You sit in place. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Got some other viewers that are coming on in, coming in, coming out there. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the show. Talking about circuit boards. Talking about, watch, I'm talking about one of the things I noticed just now is R7 does not look like that is very well attached. I don't know if you saw that there. I'll come back and... Uh, touch up the other the other lines on R8, R9, and R10, the other pads that is. Let's put some new fluxing agent down. Tin up the wires. Notice by the way that the uh, the fumes are actually going I have two fans in my uh, in my laboratory, but one of them happens to be a uh, a smaller fume extractor which is uh, off screen. I actually can't say enough about how important it is especially if doing any form of lead based soldering that there be a fume extraction even if it's as simple even if it's as simple as just putting some fan nearby that will absorb some of the fumes even doing that that's important for being able to to work with with lead based soldering because there are there's a lot of places there are a lot of places that work with lead-based solders for the pure and simple fact that they work well. They work really well. Oh, let go my... Oh, no, don't you? No. No, that's considered to be a not good thing if it were to... Well, come on. Would you please fall down? Thank you. Um, come on. There you go. There are a lot of places that work with uh, lead-based solder for the pure and simple fact that it solders better. It solders better than lead-free solder. Lead-free solder is very difficult to work with. And that's that's coming from someone out of education. There's another 310. Did I just grab the same one? I must have grabbed the same one. Either that or I've got myself a party crasher. I've got... Well, I've got no, I do. There, there are a whole bunch of 310s. There's a whole bunch of 310s mixed in here. Okay, let me try... Let me try another one. You're going to be not 310 actually. That's that's three. That's just 31. So rather than having one mega ohms, is that a goblin? Is that a goblin that's doing that? John, Matt, did you? Were you Bill? Were you any of you aware of this goblin's existence at all? Mm hmm. Could be. Could be something like that. Well, due to those other components being there oh, sorry about that excuse me can you please well we got ourselves a little, little bit of 
bit of a conundrum. There we go. There we go. Tack on the other side here. The other side here. And one last side, putting a little bit of some soldering on the last part of it there. There we go. Much, much better is what that is. Yeah. Only use lead. Can't say. Yeah. Yeah. It's I. It. It's just it's a reliability thing. It it really is a reliability thing. Um. Got lead just lead, lead, and and it's like and and you're sending it off into space. That I can't imagine the difference between like having something that's reliable in terms of just being inside of a being inside of a standard aircraft that's going to be like on our you know just in the on the Terran atmosphere versus something that you know needs to survive the temperature transitions that you've got while up in the uh, up in space I, I I can't imagine I actually <laughs> I'd love to hear more about that at some point that's a conversation that's a conversation that we need to have. At some point, over some coffee or some tea or some beer or some scotch or something like that, you know, it's, I'm about I, I could do all four of those. That's really what it is. So I only have one chip resistor left out of the group that I pulled, and it is a it is a one mega ohm, one zero five. So one zero followed by five zeros. So now I need to see if I was smart and I pulled anything anymore. Well, there are two additional chip resistors in there, so I did not pull everything out. But are they both 105s? And they are. And they are. Can you guys? Can you guys leave? <laughs> well, so, all right. So there you go. You go down over there. <laughs> How many times does that happen? You know. All right, so let's put a little bit more. Oh, I already have those. They're already tinned. Oh, that's weird. I just didn't want to. I didn't want to stay in the tacky flux. I said no. We really liked our. We really liked the house that we were staying in just now. I am trying to be a little bit more consistent. I know that the uh, resistors are not polarity specific at all. So it really, in the end, does not matter which way you put a resistor. It does matter that the numbers be on top. Or the black side of the chip resistor be on top. There is a little bit of a numbering and a color code that's associated with um, chip components, and so and so you do need to to have that on the top. You can't have the white underside of the chip resistor be soldered up onto the uh, onto the top part of it uh, at all. I'm gonna put just a little bit more on the R8 over, which is that might hopefully that's not underneath the. Uh, underneath the viewing screen too much and same thing here there's r8 on the left hand side depth perception there we go r10 and just a little bit more over there okay looking good looking good so all the main uh chip components around the comparators are are built now we're going to move on to the leds and the um the LEDs and the uh, uh, current limit resistors. Now, for LEDs, I'm actually going to be using something that I actually found sort of lying around. These are going to be, um, I think the term when I bought these were cyan LEDs, but they more or less just look white, is what they look like. Um, to show you kind of what they look like, let me grab a multimeter out. Because we actually, I want to look at what this looks like anyway, just to make sure to see if I see any markings on these particular ones. So here, let me move this out a little bit. There is the LED, and there is a green mark on the LED with a triangle that points to the green mark. Okay, so I would be willing to bet, I would be willing, be willing, be willing, willing to bet that the LED, these, these cyan or no, it's it's not cyan. That's right. It's not cyan. It's ice. Is what it is. It's it's an ice colored LED, and they were they were bought at a pretty good discount. So when I test this using uh, my multimeter set to measure diode continuity, we can see that they have a whitish colored light with the black end cathode on the green marked end of the LED. Um, I'm going to put this LED in LED two. I have red and green LEDs for 
for the other one. But I wanted to test the polarity because now we're starting to get into polarity specific devices. With polarity meaning that with polarity meaning that the um, if I put it on backwards, I could I am not using the device that it is it's originally intended for, and may either break the device, which isn't so bad, or might break the uh, circuit board, which well, that is bad if something like that were to happen. So now we'll put this on here with tin, tin U. Take my, I'm gonna take the LED that was actually flipped over. So the cathode on my circuit board is marked with a chamfer and I'm gonna take the whitish LED there and put it in that spot and put the other side of that, side of that into place there. There we go. Okay, so there's one ice, uh, not not white LED ice. It, it is it is actually <laughs> they are actually ice ice LEDs, which that was part of the reason why I laughed so hard. I'm like that's its own color in uh, the place where I ordered these from. And it's actually been the way that I've looked these things back up again a whole bunch of times as well. As so I look back up and where's the where are the ice LEDs? The, and these LEDs these are um these are 0603 LEDs that I buy for roughly, oh gosh, I think are, they are legitimately around, I think, like five cents a piece, something like that. They are not, they are not cheap by any means, oops, they are not cheap, but uh, at the same exact time, they are, uh, they are, they are worth it, they are bright, uh, they are very, very bright. Um, oh, tin whiskers, yeah, yeah. With the, uh, I think most like lead-free solders are something around 95% tin, 96, 95%, something, something pretty high with that. With Rojas being the uh, restriction of hazardous substances, which is, which is good for, it's good for things that you know you're, 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 you know, for your cooking wares and stuff like that. That's fine. I, I like the idea of not having lead in the things that I mix in my mixers, you know, so, but, but for things that need practical application, yeah, tin whiskers and tin growth, my goodness, yeah, that's got to be, that's got to be a little bit of a, of a nightmare up in space, up in space-based applications, I can't even imagine, I really can't even imagine, especially when, like, you're up and the oxygen levels start changing because the, uh, you don't have as much oxygen, like, you don't have as much O2, when you start entering up into the more satellite parts of there, not to mention when you, <laughs> not to mention, you know, you leave Earth, there's not a lot of oxygen anyway, you know, really up there. You you start to leave up into, you know, you start going up towards the moon, and uh, you're going to have a hard time finding some oxygen up around the moon. You know, there ain't no oxygen up there. Uh, is, is where the, uh, yeah. Um, all right, so now I've got, now I've got some red LEDs. Um, these actually do come in a tape and reel strip that I found. I've got, and I mean tape and reel strip, and be like, hey, here's the beginning, and there's the end. So it's like not much on the, not much on the tape and reel strip when it comes to that. Um, these guys are, they actually almost look bigger than the ice LEDs. Let me, let me bring one of them on screen. Oh, there's two of them coming on screen. So here is, here, 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 here's the, uh, Here's the bottom, and there is the top, and we're going to want to test this out. Again, I want to check to make sure that the polarity is correct when it comes to these uh, these LEDs. So I'm going to measure this. I'm going to look at it in terms of where the die is located at. Normally, a pick-and-play system, that would be able to look at the bottom. So for this, if I test this here, okay, so the side that the die is on is the anode is, is where it is. So I want to make sure that the anode is is on the uh is, so that the die that the side that the die is on is actually on the um on the bottom parts of my my circuit board so i want to make sure that the uh the die is down on the bottom part of the circuit board and so now we're going to now we're going to move the boards down and over a little bit here we'll start with the oops we'll start with this side here and uh, off screen, I'm just putting uh, I'm putting the flexing agent on LED one. LED one represents in this circuit um, that we're building here the um, the loudest of the uh, of the three signals. So this represents overall what is the uh, what is the loudest amount of uh, 
uh, what what would be if we were making the most noise, this LED would definitely uh, would definitely light up. Now the triangle that's on the bottom leads me to think that these are actually LEDs from just a very long time ago, previous capstone project. I myself, for the for the capstone projects, and for for those of you who might be tuning in to this channel, and you might be saying, what what, what capstone project? What's he talking about? So every single year, the students of uh, my degree, they have to they have to build, they have to design and build a circuit board that is uh, 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 involving specifications that I essentially give them at the beginning of class, uh, and then towards the uh, towards the uh, 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 or at at the beginning of class, once I give them the specification, I give them some of the parts, but not not all of the parts, um, if you will. I, I give them some, but not all uh, of the parts. Um, so a good die is on the bottom. And so uh, what they have to do for this capstone project is they have to design it, the, both the schematic, they have to design the, um, the layout, they have to um, get their boards uh, stencil printed, pick and placed, and reflowed. Although um, our stencil printers pick and place and reflow system for this part of our two-year associate's degree um, these particular machines are not the high volume standards that you'll find in most places. They don't have, they don't have visual recognition systems. They're, uh, they're uh, heavily reliant on operator setup. Even the stencil printers, there is a lot of mechanical setup. They are uh, AMI Presco 4, 435s, I think is what the, uh, the model numbers are. And if you look that up, what you are going to find, if you look that up, you will find a workhorse of a stencil printer that can take some punches, if you will. It, it's meant to be accidentally whoops uh, with a lot of mechanical settings. Um, but at the same exact time, uh, it's meant to uh, it's meant to more or less be something that someone uses for the first before going out into, uh, into the uh, higher parts of our degree in which there are um, uh, larger uh, circuits that are going, or larger machines that are going to be built, more higher volume based circuitry. I think the last one I've got here in my short thing of tape and reel, like that's literally, that's big. I think this is green. I think this is green. I'm going to double check. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that this is green. So let me pull, sorry about that. Let me pull one of these guys over to, over to here. Now, green LEDs, green LEDs, the, the one thing that you can always, hey, would you please, excuse me, <laughs> would you please, would you please let go? for a second so yeah I think the one thing all right here so you're coming down here the one thing you can tell about a uh, well now you can't see anything hang on one second the one thing you can always tell that's interesting that's different about a green LED compared to a red one is that a green one well, as far as I've seen have always had two two wire bonds on the top part of the LED and I think that's for handling a larger amount of current flow that it takes to get up to the illumination values that the LEDs require or at least what they're specified at um, now I think also if I'm willing to bet, I bet you this on oh, actually, okay, so let me think now if the die was on the, uh, anode side the last time, this die should be on the cathode side. I'm going to guess that this will make it light. And it does see that we get a little bit of some green light is what we get with a turn on voltage. I, so the red, the red LEDs have a forward bias voltage, and that's the amount of voltage that it takes to turn the oops, turn the LED on um, and get it to uh, allow current to pass entirely through it. Um, that forward bias voltage for green LEDs is around 2.5 to 3 volts. Uh, I think in particular for these, these are actually, I think, around 2.8 volts for the forward bias voltage. Um, if you don't apply enough voltage to the LED, um, it will just not turn on, and uh, it will not let current pass through it. It will behave like a, I mean, it will behave essentially like a very, very large resistor. Um, not quite an impedance, but definitely a... Uh, a larger resistor is uh, what it will behave as. So at this point, the die is actually going to go on the cathode side is what's going to happen here. The die is going to go on the cathode side. I'm doing this a little bit backwards because my tools are not in the right hand. I am not a... a I am not a uh, right-handed or a left-handed person, so I have to maneuver around a little bit. Oh well, that 
That may actually work. Let me see if I can't maybe pull you over. Hey, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Smooth is what that was. Smooth. That's about as that's about as smooth as sandpaper. <laughs> that really was. Jeez, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's as smooth as sandpaper. That's my that's my motto. You know, that's 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 my that's life's motto right there. At least for me. I don't know about you folks. Now, actually, now, the other thing, just to point out, on the bottom of these LEDs, there is a triangle that points towards the cathode. And that triangle, I'm going to try to slowly but surely turn it over. That triangle is on the pointing towards the cathode side. I have seen a majority of LEDs, not all, but a majority of LEDs where the, whatever the mark side of the LED is, that's the cathode. Not every time. Actually, just yesterday, just yesterday, I was looking around at different types of LEDs, and I found some orange LEDs that uh, I had ordered a while back. And the anode is the marked side of the LED. And it's it, to my knowledge, that's the only time I have ever seen something like that happen. It's befuddling in so many ways that something like that could could actually happen. Um but it's it's one of those like it it is it, it is entirely up to the manufacturer for how they how they want to build it if they want to go you know with the grain or uh, or against it the okay so I have it backwards right now I have this I have this would you please let go here let go for a second thank you thank you let's get that triangle pointed towards the chanford side of the silk screen there we go I need the triangle pointed your way thank you very much. Not the best solder jobs in the world. If anyone from my PC is watching, uh, don't follow me in terms of my uh, <laughs> my solder skills. These are not the same. These are not the same skills of someone who is who is practiced in the in a in a manufacturing art form. I am practiced more or less in a teaching art form, which uh, you know it might not look too bad. It might not look too bad, but at the same time, I've I mean I mean there's some people are out there like I've seen worse. It's like yeah. Yeah, but I don't think I'm passing anything class. I don't think, like, for, I don't, Chris, I don't think I'm passing anything class three to get that up into space. Uh, none, of the, none of those are going to pass at all for space-based applications. Um, so let's see. Now I need a whole bunch of current limit resistors. Now these resistors I have on my schematic as 120 ohms. The first ones I put down was 130 ohms. So in the end, I mean, ultimately, if these things are underneath like 220 ohms, I'm actually perfectly fine with it. I don't even know if I have enough. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. I don't. I don't actually have enough. I'm going to have to reach back a little bit later on. Although I got those. <laughs> where are those? Where's that 30 ohm, 31 ohm resistor? I'll put that guy in a onto one of these circuit boards. So now what's going to happen is, is that R11, R12, and R13 are all responsible for current limiting each of the LEDs. And those resistors um, are going to be uh, all the same or somewhere, as long as they're above 10 ohms and under 220 ohms. And 10 ohms, eh, maybe more like 22, like between uh, uh, between uh, um, uh, 20, uh, 22 and, say, uh, 220 somewhere around there uh, should be just fine so these resistors they might be kind of all over the place um, I, I would not be surprised well and the first one I grab is is not the first one I grab is exactly what the doctor ordered we'll see if we can keep this up if I was a betting person if I was me I would say somewhere there's going to be a whoops somewhere in the in the mix that one's a little bit upside down but actually this is one of those like the word looks the same right side up and the word looks the same upside down. There's a there's a phrase for that. There is a phrase like an ink like a, a a thing that um for words that look like the same both uh uh one way versus the other way. I think it starts with a P. It's been a while since I thought about that. It's been a while since I thought about that, and I can't even think of other things. But if you look at the resistors there, they kind of look the uh they look the same no matter what here. All right, so here's our 11, our 12, our 13 of the second board. So here we're going to see if how much of these resistors are actually the, uh, the same the same value here. And if not, I mean, I've got a whole, I've got a whole, you know, I do have a whole bunch of resistors. I'll just have to kind of float back off camera for a, 
for a split second here to find what the what those are. Okay, so this one's 131, so that one's off ever so slightly. I'm actually kind of I'm heating up both pads simultaneously. Can I get lucky and just can I get lucky and just hey I got lucky. All right. That's a good luck. That's a good luck right there. All right, now this one right here, that's 131. So that, all that that means is that the, the uh, a higher value of resistance for a current limit resistor, all that that means is that the LEDs are going to be a little bit more dim, and they will take up a little bit less power, which was actually part of the capstone project was that the requirements specifically stated that the board be able to work while underneath continuous operation for at least one hour there was a um there was sort of a battery capacity requirement that the circuit could not draw too much power which actually it, it really reminds me a lot because we're on the you know chris we're on the uh the uh space talks here uh, it reminds me a lot of the old apollo 13 movie where they've got to get something powered up on the ship of some sort they've got to they've got to do some sort of power up sequence to where they uh they draw they can only draw so much power coming out the thing and uh they 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 they, they say they well we have to you know create a power on sequence that brings it back with no more than it takes to power on a you know a modern day uh vacuum cleaner is what it was so it always kind of reminded me a little bit of that uh but you know really in the end when you really think about it, there is so there is so much that goes into a uh, there is so much that goes into uh, creating as little power consumption as possible for even the more modern day uh, based circuits. Like even the more modern day based circuits, there's there is something that there is something to where people don't like it when their batteries run out. Period is really in the, the the big part of that. People don't like it when their batteries run out. Okay, so let's get the uh, 131. This one's got a couple of values which are a little bit different. I just ran out. Did I just run out of the 0603 120 or 130 chip resistors? I'm looking in my container, and yes, yes, I did. Although fear not, although fear not, I should have. There it is. A box of values of additional chip components, and so let's just pull. I'm gonna pull another, just a random. I'm gonna pull. Oh, I got two of them out there. So maybe if one's not working, then that'll be okay. Do it there. There we go. All right. So now let's attach the third one to. Let's see what I pull. I, I reached into the 120 ohm uh, side of the bench. So let's see if I can't. Uh, I re and I got a 130. So they're they're just kind of mixed in between there just a little bit. That's okay. That's okay. That works, right? That works. Would have been interesting to design around. I know my yeah battery drained pretty yeah a lot of folks batteries drained really quickly and I, I really wanted to. I really did want to design something this this year with a voltage regulator. Um, but uh, I decided to kind of keep things a little bit simple. One, we had a we had a new staff person coming on whose whose background is in VLSI and uh, uh, microchip fabrication, um, and we just wanted to get him kind of adjusted to you know okay let's uh let's come on back and uh, 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 let's come on back and uh, you know do some board level design, which is um, similar in a lot of ways to to what. Uh, uh, to uh, what he does now r2 we have to come back to r2 for a second because i did not have that in my uh in my storage so i'm going to actually pull this out these are one kilo ohm resistors so i've got let's see here one so the number i should see when i'm looking at this on on the microscope here there's two or one or two or three i'm going to pull an extra one out just just in case so the number i should see for r2 should say 102 for a one a zero and then followed by two zeros it was interesting though it, it was an interesting thing to design around because you basically can't have you know one person really wanted to have like the brightest leds in the world they said well, well if it, it only if it drains the batteries out in the span of like you know a minute well 
not a very efficient circuit at all. Um, and so we did. We designed it to where it would actually uh, it would actually work around three times as long. I think is where we uh, had it given the constraints that we that we have on our our circuit board. So it's a little. Whoa, gosh, that's a that's a mess up there. One of the one of the boards. I'm guaranteeing you one of the boards I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put a chip component that is uh, that is tombstoned on the on the board. You know, just a real obvious like the real obvious. Uh, you know that happened. You know, on the uh, on the uh, 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 for, for the board. So yeah, that's gonna be fun. After these chip components go down, that really leaves us with two of the more difficult components to actually uh, to actually put down. Um, which I'll be able to do here in just a little bit. So that would be the QFN circuit, the uh, the QFN, which is the uh, LM324QT, which is, uh, that might sound, for some of you watching, that may sound familiar as a chip. I, I did like that the chip was in a, uh, was in a QFN, and that operational amplifiers really are, they really are the basis for how, so many different types of circuits really truly work. So it was really kind of a nice thing to be able to find. So we reused it again. In fact, actually, the unique thing is about this chip is that outside of the LM324QT, the rest of the electronics are actually all housed in to the MEMS microphone. All of it. There are no external electronics outside of the operational amplifier. There's no, there's no additional chips. This circuit... Quite, oh, I lost one of the chip resistors. I didn't lose it, but it's... Hey, you could come over here. Thank you. There you go. Um, outside of the, uh, the LM324QT, all of the rest of the integrated circuitry is housed within the ASIC of the MEMS microphone. Which, if you, if you check out my video, actually, I open up the lid of the MEMS microphone so we can actually kind of take a, take a peek inside to kind of see what it looks like. All right. Now the fun part, <laughs> the the fun fun part is the the uh, the U2 circuit. So I'm gonna smear a whole bunch, <coughs> excuse me, of solder on there. In fact, actually, before I do this, let me let me take a quick. I need a steady hand, so let me have some coffee. Hmm, good stuff. <laughs> All right, now let's uh. Clean up the uh, the pads of the oh, my soldering iron is getting caught on my on my on my bench here, so I'm going to clean up the pads a little bit and then apply some solder on the iron and just tin all of the outside pads going around the LM324. Now, not the big pad. I am going to take. I've just cleaned off my soldering iron. I am only going to apply just a little bit of solder in this center. I don't want a lot of solder to be housed within the center part of that pad. Uh, I really don't. So, and the same thing we're going to follow with all the rest of them. Um, we're going to take the uh, fluxing agent, put a generous amount down, clean up the clean up, clean it up, activate it, and then start to tin my way all the way across all the outside pads so that they are all tinned. Clean off my soldering iron. That's the big secret. That really is, honest to goodness, the big secret of doing QFNs is to make sure that you do not put a large amount of solder on the central parts of the the central heat sink pad because it's just it's going to create solder balls it's going to create shorts it's going to create a whole variety of problems that you really just don't want it to be a part of with your circus i'm going to tin again the outside i'm tinning around the outside parts of them hopefully you can all still see what i'm doing here making sure that i'm still on screen clean off the soldering iron and then finally put just a little bit. If you over blob the center part, which man, I should probably do that. I want to just check to make sure that everything else is sort of is sort of working correct to it. Otherwise, otherwise I actually probably would do something like that. Next, I'm going to take a uh, 
Take a Q-tip. Grab another taste of coffee. That is good electronic coffee. I get it from a local place here in Lakewood called the Rising Star. Really good stuff. Highly recommend that coffee spot. I've not yet had a bad coffee from there. So I am applying some alcohol to clean up the pads because this is one of those soldering jobs that like you kind of want everything to be as fresh as you can possibly get it if that makes any sense and so if I it's really easy to make this messed up as well and I don't want to have that happen this one's actually the tacky flux is already starting to become very, very sticky on there. There we go. There we go. All right. So now, throw that out back over there. Okay, so now what we're going to do, this is going to be a hot air rework. In addition to that, so let's see, my temperature for hot air. Uh, I'm going to set an airflow to about... I'm going to set an airflow to about 60. And I'm going to set my hot air to 275. Not too hot and not too much airflow to it. So now we're going to take out the QFNs that I've got. And I've, these QFNs I've got in a uh, little tape and reel is where those are. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this one board at a time. So I'm going to take the other two boards and I'm just I'm moving the other two boards off to the side for right now. Uh, then what we're going to do is that probably, that does look probably very, very messy right now, which most boards do. Like you're, you're talking about doing some boards by hand. Some boards can look really, really messy. I don't have an ultrasonic cleaner yet in the, uh, in my household. So, uh, notice also, if you will, that the, um, the dot that is in the, uh, currently in the upper right, that is going to match with the chips dot, which is also now in the upper right can you see the chip dot and that's going to be so that's the polarity marking for these two that's what that's going to be so what I'm going to do now is I am going to put a whole bunch of fluxing agent down and I'm going to pay a little bit more attention to this one up close I'm going to take my hot air gun which is what I've got right here taking up a lot of power. I can already hear it taking up a lot of power because uh, my fan is somewhat cool. Now I'm going to hold the chip, dab the chip down into the flux engine. Now I'm going to start to do a preheat of the board. I definitely feel the heat going right now. Again, fume extraction. So, so important. And I kind of wait for so now my solder has melted and that has sort of I'm gonna wave it around just a little bit and there we go that is not so much heat that is not so much heat that it blows the other components around although I am going to check right now to make sure that the other components did not move in that process they don't look like they did that chip does not look as centered as I would like it but the pads sort of allow it to have that level of accommodation to it the last thing I'm going to do though is as a precaution for this so I'm going to spread some additional fluxing agent around on the side and then using the knife tip of my soldering iron I'm going to kind of run it along the edge of the QFN. And what that does is as long as I don't see any bridges, that's going to supply enough heat to the pads and enough heat to the chip to where that should connect everything underneath it. And this is something that I do. It's, this is a purely visual thing. That even again, most soldering irons, you can't even do this uh, at all. There we go. Okay, one QFN, one QFN chip. Looks like it's down. Yes, one down, two to go. All right. Next one on there, we've already cleaned it. 
The pads are already tinned. It looks pretty, looks pretty bleh, what it looks like. I'm going to put some fluxing agent down. Yeah, you don't want to go too hot up in the air. The, the reason you don't want to go too hot up in the air, and this is, a, this is a very typical mistake for folks who are doing hot air QFN. And it's happened to me a few times, too, where it's like all of a sudden just chips just go, they go flying off and away. Make sure I have the right dot and the correct orientation. Let, I'm also going to make sure that you let go. Let, let go. <laughs> let me grab another thing just to pry you off of there. Excuse me. Excuse me. Thank you very much. There we go. Got that down here. I've got a little bit of some fluxing agent on my hands. That happens, though. It happens in this industry. Can't avoid that. Oh, I didn't. wasn't tangled up. All right, so I'm going to hold the chip in its place. Start to spread fluxing agent around. I'm doing what's called a board preheat. Although for a board of this, I'm not really worried too much of anything being thermally shocked or anything like that. See that? See? Can't let it go until you watch. See, the capacitor has started to melt, which means that this will... This has started to melt as well, so I'm going to kind of give the board a little bit of a tap, 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 kind of nudge it into place a little bit right there, lift that off, and again, I'm at I'm at a temperature of 275 degrees C at a flow rate of uh, 60 out of 120, so it's about half of the flow. Actually, that's something that's bothered me on this tool in particular. I mean, I love this tool. It's a quick 861DW uh, hot air rework station. I can't say enough good stuff about this tool except one one funny thing to me. So airflow is measured in terms of percent on this thing, I think. So then why, why does it go up to 120? Why doesn't it stop at 100? I've got no idea. I have, I have no idea about that. I've never understood that. I've always just kind of been like, hey, they're just doing what they do, you know, on the guitar amp pedals, you know? Like, why does it go up to 11? Well, because 10 is bigger than 11. But, they, you know, that's, there comes a time where you see a percentage thing like that, and you're like, wait a minute now. Come on. Something, something seems a little bit off about that. I don't know what. I don't know what it is, but something something seems off about that. So as silly as silly kind of as as that sounds. Actually, one of the things we are definitely going to want to do for the for the mem student that's two of them. Now we're going to do the third one. One of the things we are definitely going to do for the uh, for the students in terms of troubleshooting this uh, this board, creating troubleshooting scenarios, we are most cer certainly going to create a bad situation around one of the QFNs to where because I think there's a lot of students there's a lot of students you've taken this class you've seen you've seen some stuff happen from 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 time to time in this class and QFNs always always seem to have kind of the the one kind of a scare moment of the class where it's like oh gosh that thing is so small and yet at the same time there are so many circuit boards out in the industry that have QFN based packages on them that you're not going to get away from them at all and at some point something could go wrong to where it may not work correctly and you will have to do a hot air rework similar to what I'm doing on it right now so now I'm blowing on some hot air onto it hopefully you can see that I'm going to move over just a little bit well, the solder has already gone to melt under the QFN. A couple of tap, tap, taps. Nudge it a little bit into place. Move it off and away. Yeah, but I'm at 60. I'm at 60 out of 120. So is that 50%? It's not 60%. It's just a setting of. It's a setting of 60. So what the what the head exactly is? Ugh. You, you got me. You really do got me with that. So I really don't know in particular. There we go. Going all the way around it there. There we are. Some soap, some water, and some, some other kinds of stuff with that as well. So the oh, I'm getting a notification from here. I don't know what that was. <laughs> Am I losing hard drive space? I might be losing hard drive space. I am recording this whole thing down, and I'm recording it at a sort of a high-ish level is uh, what it is okay so the last thing that we need to put down 
for all four of these is the microphone. And the microphone, well, actually the microphone and a, a battery clip, um, which we're going to put the battery clip on uh, last. The battery clip is actually completely on the, uh, the underside part of the, uh, completely on the underside part of the, uh, of the board. Let's see here. We're still live? Yeah, we're still live. Hey, we're still live. Hey, how's it going, folks? How's it going? Yeah, and even then, we'll be I'll be putting this up a little bit later on. First thing let's do is let's tin all four of the – oops, all four sides, four pads. Now, the two pads that are on the bottom are actually going to be um, – Grounded. And I'm going to make sure that they're just about even because this is another, this is another hot air rework, and this one is tricky. This one, the first one I did, I messed it up, and the lid just popped right off. I'm going to attempt this one to do this one at a little bit more of a lower temperature to see if I can't because there's there actually really does not appear to be an easy way for me to be able to get underneath these boards for being able to do this uh, this next particular part so let's apply a little bit more flux grab my microphones out of here so I've got I actually picked out four microphones just in case because I I figured one of these might get might get <laughs> lifted if you will might be the easiest way to phrase what that is but just in case I've got one extra one there just in case all right let's put it to where the dot is going to be up on the top matching with the silkscreen symbol here and now now the fun part <laughs> please work <laughs> yeah you know all right so now we're going to oh hey hey scoot hey where are you going hey come back here come on all right. So now I am going off of instinct on this. You know, I felt something kind of move down. Did that? Does that look good to you? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you're doing there. There's a large piece of solder wire that just wound up sitting on top of one of those guys. Okay, now we got the next one. I'm still holding my hot air pen, keeping with the same polarity as before except i picked it up upside down and my tweezers are starting to get a little bit sticky there we go i also there we go okay i also i just realized i did not put fluxing agent down for the second one here that's okay okay Oh, I lost it. Where'd it go? Some of the solder looks like it kind of melted on that one, but... Okay. Oh. Oh, no. Gosh. I'm having a problem with that one. Yep. And it's, uh... It has... Oh, no, it's not... It has not disappeared. It is sitting on the bunny. That is my, uh, my little Poles voice symbol. Let's try this again here. Now, I have not put, hang on, hang on one second. Yeah, let's try, well, actually, that appears, is that connected? These are so hard to determine whether or not they actually are connected or not. They, they are, in, in actuality, I think these are one of the more harder components that I have ever actually put down on a circuit board in all complete honesty I am going to apply fluxing agent to this one I am going to remember to not be a doof at the beginning parts of this here there we go and making sure that I've got the correct polarity because I do believe if the microphone does not have the correct polarity uh, you will be doing oh I saw a solder ball with that so that's a that's a sign that that's melted for sure if you do not have the correct polarity, I, I do believe that there is going to be a uh, a problem with this. Am I still live? Hopefully I am. My computer doesn't uh, seem to show that I am, but we're, we'll find out here in just a little bit. 
So one last thing goes on to here. That would be the battery clips that I need to actually put down for a second to see if I can find something. Just the one thing, the biggest part of this whole thing, the power supply for the overall circuit that I didn't think to grab. Okay, I found, I found one. Yay! Hey, how's it going? You all still there? <laughs> so, uh, let's do this. Instead, what we are going to do is perform a little bit of a hot air rework on a battery clip off of another circuit. Well, actually, here, let's. I got one. I do have one that is a good battery, if you will. I have one that is here. And let's attach you to the board that's on the back, following the uh, correct silk screen and everything like that. So here I'm going to put down some solder paste down here and here, or some solder fluxing agent. And I'm going to put a whole bunch of solder on the this particular side here and then come on over with the normally I would want to normally I would absolutely want to I'm probably doing this right underneath the uh, right underneath where my my beautiful face is normally I would want to use a larger soldering iron for being able to do what it is that I'm doing Again, call me <laughs> call me procrastinative. Although I am going to use the larger solder wire that I happen to have here. That should make this just There we go. And there's the first one all soldered into place and if I were to connect a battery to this here, hey 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 Look at that! Look at that. we got the. If I talk normally, the green ones there. If I, uh, yeah, where's the light? If I talk normally, the green ones there. Talk a little bit louder, the blue ones there. And hey, talk it up loud, red bow. Hey, hey. So there you go. Monk, did you all see that? Okay. Hey, hey. So there, hopefully you got a chance to see kind of where that is. So that's good. The first one is all currently working. So that's a that's a good thing. Go over to the second. Now, in order to do the second ones and third ones, I really I don't have an extra. I have like a million, literally a million of these things in the laboratory at the con. I know it. I know it. One person, if 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 John is watching this, because he actually called me this morning, he was asking me if I if I needed anything. And I was like, Nah, I think I got everything back at home. Everything I need to do. And I was wrong. You're right. I was wrong. You're right. So now, okay, let's just take. I'm gonna take this guy off of here. That's what I'm actually going to do. I'm going to take you and lift you off. There we go. Thank you. And take you on the other side. So this is another chip of just another circuit I have that's sort of floating around. And I'm going to be kind of cheap with this one here just to 
uh, I'll solder I'll solder that first one on, but the other one here, this one, I'm going to take a battery and just touch it to the back terminals of these two. Hopefully in the correct orientation so they don't accidentally fry anything. All right? And touch this guy to the back part here and here. And, uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so the second one works. I don't know if you can see that on there. Second one is definitely a working. And then lastly, how about a third just for the heck's sake of it? Hey, oh, did I put it on correct orientation? I always got to wonder about that. Do I have the, oh, this one does not. Ooh, we have ourselves, or does it, no, this one does not. This one is not coming on at all we have ourselves and that was the first one that i did i am under the impression i'm very much under the impression that the qfn chip that i've put onto this first one here is actually not attached so i'm going to cover it over with a whole bunch of fluxing agent and I'm going to try the QFN chip again. It's either the QFN chip that I didn't feel right about this. There we go. That kind of... No, it kind of helped to... Give it a little bit of a tap, tap, tap. All over it there. All right. That looks a little bit more in the center than it did before. I'm going to take a little bit of some time and run my soldering iron across the across the chip and if it doesn't work this time if it doesn't actually work after this one I might actually just leave this for the class what better way than to troubleshoot this in front of the whole class but let's see here let's try this one last one right here and I'm just again I'm hello it is not working. All right. You know what I've got here? I've got something I can actually share with the class to see what it would actually happen with this. So, well, anyway, though, um, two out of three ain't bad, especially with one that's uh, uh, potentially <laughs> might need to have a little bit of some fixing here and there. So, um, but yeah, that's uh, ultimately. Uh, thank you very much, folks, for you know those signed on. They're looking at this video or anything like that. I'll try to get this posted up so that people can kind of comment on this as well. Uh, and looking forward to making some additional videos in the uh, in the future for uh, not just this circuit, but a variety of different circuits uh, that we've uh, that we've got. I've got some some things in mind to just kind of keep people interested in the science and engineering that is uh, electronic hardware. It's a fascinating subject to me, and I'd like to be able to teach more and more about it. So uh, thanks very much, everyone. And uh, uh, hey, leave a comment, uh, subscribe if you're interested, do all the rest of that fun YouTube stuff, you know, that everyone does. So uh, thank you very much also for Bill and Chris for leaving some, some of the comments that were in there. Thanks so much, fellas. Uh, best of luck to... Uh, all you folks there, maybe we can get together sometime when all this starts to starts to change here, yeah? Yeah, all right, folks. We'll see you around on the next one. See you later. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.